Hey, you, follow me on Instagram. Okay, enjoy. Yo guys, Slypy here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this Boxy Boo puppet plush thing from Poppy Playtime. This is going to be a pretty long tutorial, and it's a little bit pricey, so if you want to follow along, then go ahead. If you just want to watch the video, then go ahead, but yeah, we're going to get straight into this. Let's do this. Alright, so to start us off here, these are the materials I'm using. I got these from Joann's. Uh, I got a blue fabric for the box, a pink for the inner mouth, uh, a red, uh, I got this crafting foam and this gold for the shapes. All right, so to start off here, I already cut out the feet and the hands, and then I got the mouth right here. All I did was take my scissors and my fingers and pick out and carve out the inside of this foam, and then I glued in the pink fabric just like this, and then I cut the edges, obviously. So I'm gonna show you how to do that um, with, with putting the pink fabric in and stuff like that. It's super easy, guys. Seriously, all I did was carve it out with my fingers and some scissors, and then for the uh, feet, I just split the fabric in half and same for the hands but I'm gonna put those on the side for now and uh, yeah so we're just gonna work on the head first so I glued in the inside and it looks like a mouth it's all chunky and nasty and all that stuff and by the way guys the way I carved this out is I just drew on layers and uh, put the darker ones as the deeper layer and whatnot and then I um, sorry I'm getting the camera to focus and then I uh, just took the scissors and started cutting it out and then took my fingers and just ripped pieces out so I just have like a ton of foam everywhere. So that's how I did it. That's why it looks all nasty and mouth-like inside and all that. So yeah, now I need to glue these on so I'll show that. All right, so all I'm doing here is gluing the fabric to the edges of the foam uh, and this is going to give it a nice flush look. Then I will cut the excess fabric on the end after I'm done with that. Um, and so it's a very, very simple process, guys. And it's uh, this whole project, none of this takes sewing. This is literally all glue, just glue. There's no sewing in this entire video. Here's the idea. Yeah, you get it, cool. So yeah, this is the inside of the mouth. I gotta put the teeth on here. Yeah, that's the idea. All right, so now I'm just cutting the edges to the fabric and getting rid of them and making it look nice and flush and super, super nice. This is super, super easy, guys. Just follow this step by step and I promise you will be able to make something that looks equivalent to mine. I'm just putting hot glue in these tiny little spaces that I wanna be closed off just to make this thing nice and flush with the foam. Alright, here's an example of what this is supposed to look like. Here's the function of the mouth. Okay, cool. Moving on. Alright, so now I cut out a piece of the red fabric and I'm going to be tracing it with my red sharpie like this along the edge. This part's super simple. All you have to do is trace around the edges. That way you get the exact size and shape of the pattern you need for the red and do this for all sides. This will allow us to flushly glue everything on and just make it look like it's nice and sewed and perfect. But the fabric is so hairy that it doesn't matter. You won't even see the glue or the seams or the edges really. It'll kind of just blend in with the whole look of the plush. And yeah, it just looks super good overall. All you have to do is cut these squares out after you've uh, traced them out and then glue them on. Just like this guys, I am going to be gluing all of these sides on with hot glue and just make sure they're nice and flush on up against each other. And then down towards where the gums are, I'm going to be trimming the fabric uh, and I have to trim all the sides because we um, over trace the line, which is what you're supposed to do. Uh, and then we're just folding the fabric over towards the lip and we are just gluing it down onto the gums. That way it looks like it does in the game, and that should be good. All right, moving on. All right, so this is all glued in. No sewing was needed for this, and it is looking really, really good. Uh, this is the mouth. I gotta get the eyes and the teeth in, and I also gotta do the bottom jaw, but it's getting pretty late, so I'm gonna head to sleep, and I'm gonna finish this another time, and yeah, I'll see you guys then. But before I go, I'm going to have to get a new huggy because this one is going bye-bye. Alright, so now I need to take these apart and put the eyes on there. 
yeah. All right, so I got the head all together. It looks pretty good. It opens like this. Um, I tried gluing the eyes on just for a test, and uh, this, I noticed that in the pictures, the top section of the head is actually larger than the bottom, so what I'm gonna do to fix that is I'm going to take these four pieces of felt and add an extra layer up here. It'll probably go up about this much, like half an inch, and then I'll redo adding the red fabric around it. So hopefully that'll make the head look a little bit more like an overbite. So yeah. Okay, so I made this piece of felt that I'm going to stick on the top of here and I'm just going to rewrap this in the red fabric and then uh, that way it'll make it have more of an overbite and it'll look more accurate to the game and then I'll go ahead and start making the teeth. All right, so I fixed the head, I rewrapped it, it looks all good. Now I'm going to use my thread remover. I'm gonna poke holes in the fabric and I'm going to stick the eyes in there. Once the eyes are in there, I'm gonna hot glue them in and then we can move on. All right, so there we go, I got the eyes on. Now I just have to put another layer of red fabric on the back of the head to cover up this black piece and then the head will be practically done. But yeah, this looks really, really good. All right, so that is the head done. This is the back, it's on there, looks pretty good, folds properly, and yeah. So now his head looks a lot more accurate to the game and he can do some chomping action. And I'll fix his jaw and all that stuff later, but I'm going to move on to the feet and do the teeth later when I do all of the clay casting. So. Yeah, that's gonna stay there for now. So for the feet, it's gonna be extremely easy. All I'm doing is cutting out red pieces of fabric and just wrapping this. Um, it's literally the easiest thing in the world. I just need to wrap this. The only thing else I'll need to do for the feet will be the claws, but I will do that later when I do the teeth and the claws for the hands and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm gonna start by wrapping the feet. Okay, now I have the feet cut out and uh, I would like to move on to the hands, but I do wanna take a break from this fabric wrapping stuff because it is really bothering my fingers. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and I'm going to check out some of the clay. So I'll film that for you guys, so yeah. All right, so I used my air dry clay and I made little casts for the claws, for the toes. Uh, I'm gonna be doing different ones for the fingers, but it was really, really simple. Let me show you guys. I literally just shaped them out and then used something. I actually used my um, de-sewing tool to put in these like cracks and ridges that he has. And then I took my paint and I painted it this iconic yellowy color that he has for his claws along with his teeth and I think they look pretty 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 freaking close to the actual thing but yeah those look really cool all right guys so I used the clay and made the claws they look really nice like really really nice they turned out well yeah now you're gonna watch me suffer through and glue all of these claws into the feet Alright, that is both of the feet done. They look absolutely amazing. They're terrifying, they're sharp, they can hurt people, they can penetrate, and 
yeah, no. So this guy looks absolutely amazing so far. This is what they sound like when they walk around. They look like McDonald's french fries, just notice that. <laughs> but yeah, no, these look absolutely amazing. And now we are going to move on to the hands. All right, so here's the idea for the hands. You, If you know Boxy Boo, then you know what I'm gonna do. But basically, I have these two little boxes. I may consider making these bigger, but for now, they're fine. Uh, and then I'm going to be using these individual pieces of foam to make the fingers. And so I'm basically just gonna take my scissors and cut around them until they are the size of the fingers. But yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so I made one of the hands off camera. It looks absolutely phenomenal. Like this looks exactly like Boxy Boo in game. Uh, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. I did a lot of trial and error. Um, these were my first fingers and then this was my second finger and started way too big, started, and then I made it wrong. It was just kind of not the right size. It was still a little too big. And then I got down to this and um, previously I had been making circular shapes. I did realize that his his fingers are actually more of a rounded square. So I did this shape and now I'm going to show you guys exactly how I made this hand so you guys can do it yourself. It's extremely easy. Um, all you need is hot glue and clay and fabric foam and this wire. Wire is super easy to find. You can buy it anywhere. It's not expensive either. But so yeah. All right. So let me run you guys through how we're going to make this. So I have this nasty old uh, white felt that I never used. Um, I typically wouldn't use this stuff, but since this is going to be covered up, this is going to be covered up. It doesn't matter if it's stained or nasty or anything like that. Uh, and all we're going to do is use this. Uh, you guys can use anything else, but I'm going to use this to solve this issue. See how it's not completely flat. We want that to be flat. We want it to match this side, but since we cut it, you know, it's kind of hard to get that flat shape. Uh, you guys can come up with your own solution, but this is how I came up with mine. I'm just going to line it up like this. So I line the piece of foam up and then I take my scissors and I just cut along the edges of my foam and like so. So now I have this piece of felt. What I'm gonna do with that piece of felt is I'm not gonna worry about it being a perfect shape right now. For now, I'm just gonna get it onto this piece of foam. Put that on there, really stamp it in. Any of these edges that are still sticking out, like how you can see that edge is still sticking out, once this is fully dry, of course, we can just snip it. So just snip those edges out of existence, snip anything that's coming off, like of the side. Like if you have any pieces sticking out here or anything like that, just snip them and make sure it's nice and flush. And now we have this perfectly shaped cube, or not cube, uh, rectangular cube. Um, and we are going to now wrap this in the mink. So we're going to take our red mink and we're gonna lay it down on the table like this. I'm gonna take the hand, and this is how I did everything, by the way, how I did the head, how I did the feet. This is how I did everything. But I decided, you know, I might as well run it down with you guys because some of you guys might not understand how to do this. So all I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna make sure this is completely flat and I'm going to not trace the edges exactly, but about half an inch outside of the edges. So it's it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but I drew the line from the actual foam and that gives us a lot of breathing room to glue this thing on because the problem with a lot, with hot gluing things on is you need a lot of space to be able to cut off and make mistakes because you make a mistake with hot glue, it's practically permanent, and that is not what you want. All right, I have both sides glued on. Looks like a nice ice cream sandwich, uh, a Christmas ice cream sandwich. <laughs> if you guys, remember, if you guys have any questions, make sure you ask me in the comment section down below. I always answer my comments, as long as they aren't spam garbage <laughs> and are genuine questions. Or you can join the Discord server and get a hold of me directly. Uh, it's very easy. I'm very active on there. Link in the description for that. Um, but I, I will respond on there. So if you want to guarantee respond, join the Discord server and just ask me the question and I will tell you exactly how I did it. I do Q&As on there all the time and I'm also just active in chat. So you can ask me whenever you'd like. I'm always on there. All right, so we're going to go on and glue this part of the hand in. These are, this is just the side kind of bringing this all together, making it look very clean and flush. What's really good with this type of mink 
And if you're following along, I'm not sure because, you know, Joann's is very and every fabric store is very unpredictable with what kind of fabrics they'll have in stock. But if you have a very similar or identical type of mink, what's very good about this one is it's extremely uh, hairy and fuzzy, just like Boxy, and it hides all of these hot glue seams and non-sewed in seam lines very, very nicely, which makes this plush making process ten times easier. Now we are going to take our piece of foam that we use for the fingers. We need to make three more of these, I exactly the same shape. Try and make sure that you get the closest shape possible to this one, or else your fingers are going to look all whack. Okay, so make sure you get the closest shape possible, and make sure they're not too big. You will be surprised. Once you add the fabric around these little fingers, they will grow exponentially in size. They will look a lot bigger than when you cut them, so make sure you cut them down about half of what you think, uh, of what you want the finger to look like. So, as you can see, these fingers are a lot bigger than this little piece of foam. They are a lot puffier and a lot hairier, so give yourself that room and make it so you don't have to do it four times like I did. So yeah, give yourself that room and just take your time with it. All right, it shouldn't take you very long. It took me about three minutes to make all these fingers. With trial and error, it might take up to 20, uh, but this looks good. And just to test the size, like I said, this will change once you add in the fabric, but this looks about good. All right, so again, we're gonna take our mink here and we are going to do the exact same thing we did with that. We are going to get the top and the bottom. We're going to put those on first and then we're going to wrap it. Uh, luckily the uh, wrapping piece will be a lot smaller this time so we will use a lot less fabric but we are just going to go around just a tiny bit outside of how just a tiny bit over how big this is supposed to be and then we are going to flip this around. Both sides will not be perfect unless you have proper cutting tools for foam. I do not but that is fine. I make do. Now we have those two pieces. Now we are going to see how much piece and how much fabric it's going to take to wrap this guy. Let's go a little bit over this time. It'll take till about here. Okay, so I'm gonna need about this much fabric. Okay, all right, so you have your three pieces cut out and now we need to get these glued on. So we're going to start with this side and we are going to do like we did before. Just like that, that is one finger done and ready. And so now we can just see how that would look. And it looks pretty perfect. Now you just gotta do three more. So yeah, like I said, very time consuming. All right, now we are done with all of the fingers. And before we poke any holes or do anything to the palm and the fingers and stuff like that, we are going to do the fingernails. And that is going to be using air or oven dry clay, whatever works for you. I prefer air dry, it dries quicker, it's faster. Um, oven dry is more controllable and better quality clay it breaks e less easy but you know the only reason why I'm doing air dry to be honest is because I bought it on accident instead of oven dry but yeah so we're gonna be doing the claws uh, and yeah so we're, we'll, we'll, we'll poke holes and and do all that stuff while the claws are drying because they're gonna dry and then they have to we got to paint them and then the paint has to dry and then we got to do a second coat and then the paint has to dry again so it's a whole process all right, so first, before you get your clay out, you just want to make sure you have four of these little copper wires. You will stick these into the clay uh, nails. That way they can stick into the foam and, and have a harder time falling out uh, and just keep them more sturdy in there. We'll just, you know, hot glue them in. So, yeah, we're going to put these off to the side and then we are going to move everything out of our way, especially our fabric and pieces. This hot, th this clay will ruin all of our pieces and all of our progress. So we need to get, make sure it is out of the way and make sure our space is clean. So take the time. If your space is messy, clean your space. All right, we are going to take big old, big old blob of this clay, close up the rest of this. All right, using this blob, we are going to make the nails. And how we are going to do that, you may ask? 
we're gonna take off about this much okay and then we are slowly just going to and you can do alternative ways this isn't the only way you can make nails you don't have to make them out of clay but I want to make them look super accurate you can sew them or do whatever you want be creative with it but I'm just gonna take my time and slowly just make this shape that I want to for the nails like I did on the other hand and yeah I'm just gonna be copying the boxy boo picture off the internet and just trying to replicate his shape and his nails to the best of my ability and as you can see I'm doing a pretty good job making the shape so far um, and yeah it's it's very 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 simple you just you just gotta take your time be patient Now we take our desewing tool, and you can use actual sculpt sculpting tools, but these are the only tools I have. And you're just gonna lightly make little cracks and ridges in the claw to make it look very, very realistic. Okay, and now that we're done with one claw, you're just gonna leave it out to dry, and then we're gonna paint it. And while it's drying, work on all of your other claws, and it should take mm, about 30 minutes, and then. Just let them dry and then we'll do the painting process. All right, now that we got all of our claws kind of dried, we are going to just take some of this paint. This is just some acrylic paint. It's just like this yellowy, creamy color. And we're just gonna put a little bit on our plate. So now we're just gonna take out one claw at a time. And I made this little thing. I just took some of my leftover uh, clay and just made this, poked little holes in it and uh, yeah, so they can dry a lot better. But just gonna take some paint, dab it along my brush, and I'm going to paint this on here. Alright, now once you're done with your second coat on your paint while it's drying and just getting it, you know, time to rest, or if you haven't painted yet and you're just waiting for your clay to dry, uh, you're gonna need these two tools. I cannot stress how important a desewing tool is or a tool of this kind that is a sharp, pointy uh, kind of impaler. Um, we're gonna take this Sharpie and the um, little tool here. And we are going to take our fingers and our hand. Now, what we are going to do, and I've already done it already, is mark exactly where we want to place our fingers. So, as you can see, I took the Sharpie and I marked these holes. You need four of them all along. There we go. Now, you're going to do the exact same thing with the fingers. So find which parts of the fingers are going to be your base usually the bigger part is the best option and then you're just going to mark little holes there so you know exactly where you're going to be placing this wire now we're going to take our desewing tool and we are going to stick it inside how you're going to want to do it is like this let me show you you're going to want to put it in like so and then hook on like this see and cut don't do anything else or it'll ruin the entire hand and you'll have to restart, which is a complete waste of fabric. You should be able to pull off a little bit of foam right there, a little foam out of there, and then you'll be able to stick the, the wire in there, and that's all you need to do. You just need to break this fabric wall, kind of, and it just opens it up, and you'll be able to stick the wire in there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now we have all of our holes in our fingers and our hand, and we can start sticking the wire. So, 
what we're gonna do for the wire is you're gonna need some sort of a wire cutting tool because scissors just aren't gonna cut it. So see if your dad or anyone you know has a wire cutting tool. And we're gonna cut about this long. And we are going to do this four times. Cut, cut, cut. Now what we're gonna do with these four wires so we're gonna take them, we're gonna try and find the middle to the best of your ability. Just gonna bend them like this, like that. Just bend them like that. You're gonna need to do this angle. A little bit longer right here, and then a little bit shorter right here. You're gonna do that four times. And there we have it, four of our wires. And now we are going to stick it into our hand. All right, now we have all the wires in. Now all we are going to do is go around and attach all the fingers by sticking them in. Looks really good. And if I like it, then I'm just going to pull them back out and do this glue. However, before we glue these back in, we are going to flip them over to the opposite side, a side without the circles on them, and we are going to make more circles. Do not get these confused. Do this one at a time. That way you do not get them confused. And we're just going to draw the circle, tear, and now we have our hot glue gun ready. We're going to take our now dried, painted fingernails and we're just going to hot glue this inside area. I'm gonna stick this in here real quick. Now we're gonna stick our hot glue gun inside of here, fill the inside. The wire should keep the hot glue from heating or from drying super fast, so don't worry about that. And now we are going to stick it in. Make sure this bottom seam right here is on the bottom so the claw is facing, like where the point is facing down needs to be the bottom of the seam. So you don't see that ugly seam on top. You are going to do that three more times and then we are going to put these fingers on the hand. All right, now that you've gotten all of your wonderful looking fingers done, you are just going to hot glue these puppies on by first putting your hot glue gun in the hole you already placed. Then we are going to hot glue the bottom right here. Make sure it's the side with the seam on the bottom. Then we are going to stick the finger on the hand and make sure to glue it in place. Now once you are done with all of that, you will have your hand and you can go ahead and make your second hand and that will make two hands and they can clap like this. So I haven't really touched the head since the beginning of this video, uh, but now it is really important that we put in our teeth. So I'm going to look at a picture of Boxy Boo for you guys and figure out the placement of these teeth and you guys can just follow along. All right, now using my Sharpie, I got all the placement for my teeth, and you guys can use this as reference. I just used the picture of Boxy Boo, and now I'm going to use my clay to make those teeth. All right, now before we move on to the clay molding part of the teeth, you're gonna need to cut out 25 copper wires. That is how many teeth he has, and you will need each one of these to stick inside of clay so they actually go into the mouth properly and stay in there. All right, so I'm gonna do most of this off camera, but as you can see here, this is the general idea for the teeth. Super, super simple. Just a skinnier, longer version of the claws like we did before, except less markings and gashes through them, making them more teeth looking. Um, but yeah, so that's the general idea and that's what I'm gonna be doing. All right, and just like that, all the teeth are painted and now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this top row in and then get started on the bottom row. All right, so now when all the teeth are all set and done and glued in, it should look something like this. Let me see if I can get some good lighting. The top row looks absolutely phenomenal. It looks fantastic, looks great. Now I just gotta do the bottom row and the head will almost be completely done. All I need to do after that is add in the bolts on each side and I also wanted to add in wires in the back here, which I'll have to figure out how to do because this head is going to be too heavy to be able to stand up on its own, so it'll need the support of wires to open and be poseable. So yeah, let's do this. All right, so I went on Project Playtime and I got screenshots of Boxy Boo uh, doing an email and I was able to get these shapes, so I photoshopped them, cropped them out, turned them into PNGs, and then I printed them out. And I'm not going to use these, don't worry, I'm just using these for perfect pattern reference so I can cut out my gold fabric like that and then uh, glue it onto the box. But yeah, so I'm going to start working on the box now. The mouth is all done, we saw that. Cool, 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 mouth all, all done, all good. And so yeah, we're gonna move on to the box and then uh, I got the uh, 
piping for the arms, the ribbed piping that I'm gonna be using, and I'll show you guys what that looks like in a little bit after we're done with the box. But yeah, let's move on to the box. All right, guys, so we have one, two, three, well, those, no, that was two together, four, five, six, uh, uh, seven, eight, nine, and 10 pieces of cardboard. All I'm going to be doing is making the box, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to put two together, hot glue them together, do that every single time. It's gonna have, I'm gonna, you're gonna have to do that six times. So just put two together, you're gonna hot glue them together, and then we are going to make the cube shape. It is on each side, it is, five and a half inches long on each side. So if you wanna do a little comparison, five and a half inches long on each side. All right, so I got the box cut out and all uh, glued together, and I'm just focusing on cutting out these side pieces now. I took the, uh, the, uh, shapes that I cut out, and I will link them down in the description if you guys want to print them yourself. I just took the shapes and centered them with my ruler um, using my measurements and went around and cut the square, and then that's where I'm going to put the circle and then the star and all that stuff. So I'm just cutting this out, and then I'm going to cut these in half and make them the flaps. But yeah, so I'm going to do that on the other side, uh, just using a box cutter. You can do this before you glue all this together, but uh, I, I, I wasn't thinking about it, so doing it now. And then after this, we have to cut a hole in the bottom, and then we can and start gluing things on. All right, so the box is all done and together. I cut the hole at the bottom for the legs. And now I'm going to take my gold fabric along with my templates and I'm going to cut out the star and the two circles and the heart with this gold fabric. All right, I will see you guys when I'm done with that and then we are going to wrap this sucker with blue fabric. All right, I have all four of my shapes cut out. Now I just need to get the blue fabric cut out to wrap this entire thing. So yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, so I got all of this cut out. Uh, that's gonna go and wrap around this uh, box here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out these two squares and then I'm going to hot glue this strip around the entire box, then move on to the bottom and the lid. All right, so I got the whole box wrapped up, but before I do anything else, I'm going to take black paint and I'm going to paint the inside all black. That way we don't see the inside and none of this crap is showing and it'll just make it look cleaner. All right, so I've completely wrapped the box in my fabric and now I'm going to go through and put on the star and the heart and then I will do the flaps where I will attach the circle before I cut them in half. All right, so now I cut out these little flaps and I am just cutting out these little fabric pieces along with them and gluing them on and then gluing them on to here to make the open box flaps that you see in the game. And I will also obviously put these circles on there before gluing them on, but yeah. Okay, so I'm completely done making the flaps and now I'm just going to glue them in at about this angle. So they're gonna look like, well, it's just gonna be an open flap where the arms are going to come out. All right, so these flaps are all on, everything's good. Let me move this over just a tiny bit so you guys can see that a little bit better. Uh, I made the lid, which I just uh, cut another piece of cardboard out and then uh, put these pieces of felt on there with hot glue. And I'm going to attach it to the back using hot glue and this piece of blue fabric, just like on Boxy Boo in the game. As you can see, he's got that little piece back there. And then we're gonna do the bolts. So I'm gonna get those on and I'll see you guys then. All right, I made these two screws with gray fabric and the Sharpie, and now I'm going to glue it onto the hinge. All right, all done with the screws and the box is looking just about done. Uh, I, I really like how it looks so far and uh, yeah, it seems like that's about it for the box and then we can Move along to the arms and really assembling this thing. All right So now that we have all the parts together I'm going to go ahead and start doing the limbs now. I found this at Home Depot It was originally white, but I took red spray paint to it and made it this perfect red color And I'm going to cut these out into sections and see how it looks as the limbs all right, so I cut out all these different pieces uh, for the limbs. Um, we have two shorter ones, which are for the 
legs. Oh. We have two longer ones, which are for the arms, and then this very long one, which is for the neck, and you'll see why this one has to be longer. Uh, now, for all of these pieces, I'm just going to uh, cut out more pieces of cardboard and paint it black and put it in there, and I'm just going to uh, carve a hole in the middle, uh, stick them through the hole and glue them in and they should stay pretty tight like that. Okay, so I painted it and then I put the uh, tubing through and it looks like this. I'm going to hot glue around the sides of the tubing, uh, but first I'm going to stuff a wire in there. So I'm going to be using this piece of wire and all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it inside and then on the ends right here, I'm going to just hot glue it down, just on the ends right here. I'm gonna hot glue that down and just let it sit for a little bit, let it completely dry, and that will make the inside of the arms flexible. All right, so I haven't glued the hand on, but I put this through with the, it's kind of hard to see guys, sorry. Uh, I glued the cardboard, uh, the black painted cardboard to the pipe, and it looks, fantastic and you know I got the wires in there and I cut a hole in this hand uh, made this wire extra long on this side and stuck it in there I'm gonna glue this uh, once I have this glued in but yeah I'm just gonna do that glue that in and it bends and it and it poses by the way and then I'm gonna move on to the other side all right the arms are attached and they are looking fantastic now with these sticking out pieces I cut little holes at the very bottom of each hand right down here right at the very bottom and I'm just going to stick those pipes right in there and then hot glue them into place just like I did with the fingers and there we go both of the hands are attached along with the arms and it looks pretty good it's not a slinky but it's close enough i think it looks pretty good and now all we need to do is do the legs and the neck and we will be done well and i gotta add this twisty thing and uh the bolts on the head but yeah then we'll be done all right now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the feet we are just going to cut holes into here we're gonna put pipe in here and glue it on the inside and then we're gonna poke this through one piece of cardboard that is going to go on the bottom right here we're gonna have to put two holes in that and make sure it's symmetrical uh and then yeah we'll just put them through the bottom and the feet will be just like the arms Okay, so I got the legs here, I got the pipe or the uh, wires glued in, and now I just need to put it through the top here, let it go through the bottom, and then I'll glue it in from there and then glue on the feet. All right, it is now time to attach the head, but before we do that, I'm going to do the same thing I did for the box. I'm gonna cut out circles with the gray, uh, like metallic fabric, and I'm going to put them right here for his little bolts. And I'm also going to cut out yet another square back here, uh, and I'm going to uh, put wires inside. So I'm going to glue the wires down first, and then I'm going to put another piece of fabric over it. Then I will glue it on. All right, and I have the screws on. <laughs> He's got something on his head. Okay, I got the screws on, looking pretty good. The wires are now in the back, so if I go like, oh, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but if I were to pry his head open like this, <laughs> oh my gosh. There, it will stay, and now it looks super cool, so I can pose them and put them in episodes like that, and uh, yeah, and it, they're pretty hidden back here, and it, it looks it's, it looks really good. Okay, so it's all glued in like this. It's just perfectly cut out. And then I put these two pieces of cardboard, these two pieces of cardboard on the walls of the inside of the box. That way when I put this in, it'll just rest perfectly on those walls like this. And now all I'm gonna do is glue it in. So I'm gonna first glue it onto those walls that I put on the side, then I'm going to just glue the edges and paint them. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is now glued on there. Now all I need to do is get the head on and he will be all done. All right, and now the head is on and in place. Looks pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It's completely done. Um, and yeah, this, this looks absolutely phenomenal. This is definitely one of the best custom plushies I've personally made, and I really, really, really like how this guy turned out. I'm gonna bring up his, uh, his mouth right now. Rawr. Look at that, he looks pretty sick. There we go. Oh yeah, he looks so good, guys. The only thing is, he can't stand up by himself, and if he falls, he'll break a tooth. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, he, he can't, he can't stand up. He does not have a center of gravity. Uh, I feel like if I would have put 
uh, the little uh, pipe back a little bit more. He may have had a center of gravity, but that's still a hard maybe. I might try doing that in the future because it's not too hard to remove this platform. So I might try doing that in the future, but for now, he's just kind of goofy and you just got to hold him up by his head. Uh, but yeah, no, he's pretty, pretty cool. You can even laugh. Ha 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 ha. He looks so sick. But yeah, guys. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please smash the like button. This video took so long to make. This took at least three weeks, and that's just because I'm in the process of moving into an apartment, so it's just a whole shebang. Um, I'm going to put him down to bed. <sighs> He's sleeping. Um, but yeah, guys, please, please, please smash the like button. It does help me out a lot. And it would be even more amazing if you'd consider subscribing because I do stuff like this all the time and I make tons of things like Boxy Boo, really cool, fun plushies and stuff like that and I make fun content. So please do subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help me out a lot. And comment down below if you're making this plush alongside me. Uh, I would love to see your guys' YouTube videos. If you followed the DIY and made this plush yourself, uh, definitely upload it to YouTube and I'll check it out. I would love to see that stuff, or just post a picture of it on Instagram, I'll share it on my story, and stuff like that, maybe I'll make a compilation post, but, man guys, th this is a, a really, really cool plush, and I'm finally so excited that I finally got this together, and wow, it just looks absolutely amazing. Like, I, I really outdid myself, it looks phenomenal, it looks so game accurate, and I'm, I'm really, really proud of myself. This is definitely one of the best plushies I have ever created personally. But yeah, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video, and I'll catch you next time. Boxy Boo, out! Yum.